welcome to Cohen in the City Suburban On Air. And today, uh, talking about one of my favorite charities, the Just for Kids Foundation. And with me is Lori Bloomer, who's the executive director. Uh, we have uh, some young, uh, three youngsters, actually. We have uh, Jill Liebman and her mom, who looks like her twin sister, Sherry. Uh, and we have Sarah Jacobson. And they're part of a very exciting project that the Just for Kids Foundation is embarking upon, some great music, and they're always thinking outside the box. So, Lori, first of all, can you just tell us and our audience, for those who are not aware, what is the Just for Kids Foundation? Okay, thanks, Mike. So, Just for Kids Foundation has been around for over 30 years. We're a foundation that raises money solely for the Montreal Children's Hospital. And every year our board chooses a campaign that they feel will be really relevant for the patients and their families who have to have a hospital experience uh, at the Montreal Children's Hospital. So this year we are raising funds for a mental health campaign and specifically a social worker who specializes in mental health who will be in the emergency room. And uh, that, campaign was actually chosen pre-COVID, but has become so relevant today, considering what children and teens are experiencing right now with a little bit of isolation and all the rules that come with the lockdown. So we're really happy to have uh, this event benefit that campaign. And uh, this event's called JFK Voices. It's sort of a pivot from an event we did in the past, JFK Glee. We really still wanted, you know, the show must go on theme. <laughs> and uh, so we really wanted to still do something exciting that helped these young people showcase their amazing talents, raise money for a great cause. And you know what, singing and dancing and all these wonderful things, they, they do help with your mental health too. So it's really just a overall great thing for everyone to participate in. I'm gonna ask the two participants in a minute uh, about their goals and objectives, but Lori, uh, I see that you had a goal of how much you wanted to raise. And I believe you've already, at, as of this recording, as we're taping right now, you've exceeded it. Yes, we're so excited. You know, we weren't sure, you know, how everyone would respond to an event like this going online. We have no experience with that. It's always been live. So, and we didn't know if the students would be able to still participate considering, you know, what's going on in their lives right now. And we're so excited. And really it's all because of these young, amazing, talented kids who are going out there, they're raising the money and they're really doing amazing things. We're really, really proud to have them involved. Okay, so Jill, uh, what was your goal in terms of how much you wanted to raise? How much have you raised and how did you pick your song? Um, my goal was $500. And I've raised about 1,300 as of like a few minutes ago. <laughs> um, and I chose a song yesterday by the Beatles. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Um, it was actually a bit of trial and error. I was just playing around with a few songs I was familiar with because I really wanted to choose a song that would be like amazing and really bring in as much money as possible for such an important cause. Uh, that's great. Uh, Sherry, you must be very proud of your daughter. Was this her own initiative or did mom play a role? So we, we heard about it on the radio and we told her about it and she really wanted to do it. So I heard somebody talking about it on the radio um, just recently, actually, maybe a couple weeks ago. And we talked about it at home and she really seemed interested and wanted to do it. Now, Jill's only 14 years old, right. but she's, you've, you've been, I know I've done interviews with both of you before and she's, she started singing at quite a young age. So you've been kind of like a mom slash manager for a few years now. I don't know about manager, but she started singing when she was in kindergarten <laughs> and she was always musically inclined and she plays various instruments and, and keyboard is sort of self-taught, but she's been taking guitar and bass lessons forever and she's performed and many different events and we're very very proud of her for sure terrific now sarah uh tell us your story how did you find out about this competition how did you decide to get involved how much have you raised and what's your song okay so i got involved because i heard about this organization through a newsletter actually that was sent to um from my school and so basically my mom, like I don't usually, like sometimes I read the newsletter, but it's usually my mom who does. So she told me about it and she said that she thinks it'd be a great opportunity. 
And so I decided, you know what, I agree. And I think it's a really important cause, especially nowadays, a lot of people are struggling, um, struggling mentally. So, and I know that the resources in the children's hospital are limited because not a lot of funding goes into it. So I figured it was really important. And I've always had a passion for singing. I've sang for many years. I was in my school play for all of elementary school. And so I, I also love musical theater and I love uh, Les Miserables. So I decided to choose a song on my own from there. On my own, pretending he's beside me, alone. And I thought it, 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 it showed off my, my voice the best. And so I felt it was the best song for me. And I raised over like $3,000 around, uh, I think 3,300 something to be precise. Um, yeah. Well, you're, you're a student at Herzliya. Uh, uh, Jill is at Villa. I think you, I can tell you're both good students because I asked you a whole bunch of questions and you remembered to answer <laughs> each one of them yeah, perfectly. <laughs> so I'm impressed with that. So Lori, uh, this is fantastic. And, and I certainly believe that it can grow. You know, post COVID, you don't know. We've learned a lot of things. We live in a Zoom world right now. You don't know even a year from now when God willing, everything goes back to normal, we still might be doing these kind of things. But how has the pandemic affected JFK? So in the beginning, it really affected us hard and quick. So we quickly responded by shutting down our offices, the physical office. Uh, thankfully, we were able to get out of uh, those contracts. So we saved a lot of money in overhead, uh, quickly started setting up home offices and Zoom daily with the team. We have uh, Alexa and Corey, who I work with. And you, you all probably know she's, they've corresponded with you. And uh, so now we work efficiently. Um, in terms of dollar raise, I would say like our events are doing less than like probably about a quarter to half of what we've done in the past. People have been really amazing though, like showing up and donating to different things. We're trying new things like contests, which are have been raising a great amount of money. So we're really trying and we have an amazing community behind us just for kids. Could not stand with just the three of us to, to do what we do. We have amazing volunteers, people who help us raise money and funds. Uh, participants for our events. So the community has really rallied behind us and helped to keep things going. Uh, but it's been a, definitely been a challenge. So Jill, uh, you're, uh, as I said, you're in, in high school now, uh, grade eight, I believe grade eight. Grade nine. Correct? Grade nine. Okay. So how has the pandemic changed your life? And also uh, when it comes to mental health, we know that we're fortunate. I feel I'm very fortunate that, uh, you know, I live in a house where, you know, my life has not changed that badly compared to a lot of people. But it, I don't know, you might know some kids who, who have been affected by COVID in different ways. Yeah, definitely. So I personally haven't been very affected by COVID, thankfully. I mean, I'm extremely lucky to live in a comfortable home and have access to internet and online schools. But some people aren't as fortunate as me to have a big home where everyone can sort of learn properly and connect with their friends outside of school with like I've been doing. Uh, very good answer. Uh, 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 Sherry, uh, you're the mom of uh, a student, but also a someone who likes to perform and you're also a hockey mom. So how's it affected you? I think the hardest part was watching everything my children had to give up. And, you know, not seeing our extended family, not being able to see my father, those things are difficult. Um, but again, we, we seem very fortunate. We are very fortunate. We're all healthy and we have a big home to live in. We can all spread out for, for online school. Everyone has their own private spaces. The hardest part is really watching what my children had to give up. My son lost a year of hockey. My daughter lost pretty much a year of everything that's social. And that's very hard at this age. And, and for me, you know, I can handle being home, but watching my children give up all of those things were, was very hard for me. Uh, very, very well said. Uh, and Sarah, what about you? How has the pandemic impacted you? I imagine you, you're in grade 11, so you're not going to school every day. You're doing some online. How's it impacted you? So I agree. I think that I'm very fortunate. I'm very lucky that it hasn't affected me in 
such a bad way. Obviously, being grade 11 and having a normal last year of high school has sucked, but I've tried to make the best out of a bad situation. I see my friends uh, from a distance outside of school. I still do activities. I go skiing. Like, I try and do as much as I can. And, you know, like, it, it is what it is. You just have to try and make the best out of stuff, out of the situation. And, um, and yeah, and help others who are struggling. And I know a lot of people are struggling mentally, which is why this cause is so important. Um, so yeah. Where do, you, where do you live, Sarah? I live in Hampstead. Okay, and I know Jill lives in Coatsy. Look, I have a feeling, I'm a city councilor there, of course, and I have a feeling that the two of you could be on your city councils. Jill has uh, four years to go before she's eligible. Sarah, probably a year or two. So watch out, uh, Lori. Look at these very, very bright young ladies. Um, and uh, by, by the way, Sherry could get a few votes too. She knows a lot of people. So who knows? And, and Sherry is 18, I think, next year. So she, she, could, right. she, could, be a, she could run as well. Lori, how do people find out more about this uh, competition? So you can go to jfkvoices.com. You can donate to Sarah or Jill's page or, or to the event, of course. Um, we are going to be having a live uh, show and showcasing um, all the students, uh, Mark Bergman, Shannon King, Jason Rockman, all those wonderful DJs we know on our radio are going to be present to uh, give some awards and announce the top three performers. Do we know when that'll be? March Do we 7th. know when that, when that will be? Yes, yeah, so that will be on March 7th. March 7th. Okay, I'll be watching. I'll be watching because as a dad, my daughter many moons ago was in uh, JFK uh, Glee and I have wonderful memories from, from watching those shows. So uh, terrific. Thank you all for joining me. Good luck and stay safe. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. You too. Thank you guys. Thank you.